Welcome back, everyone, to Natalie's the Don. I remain your host, Dominic, and or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And to this match is going to be between Chrissy and Catastrophe on Ravaged. I have never actually seen Chrissy play, but I was curious. All right, this is actually wrong now. Uh, I need to fix this attrition display to actually be correct when it's under the spectator display, but not right now. Anyway, yeah, so Chrissy, Catastrophe, Ravaged. I haven't seen Chrissy before. They're new, I think. They're kind of new. They're not, they're not the least new player in the world. They are playing Cloaky Bots. No surprises there. Catastrophe, on the other hand, is playing Shield Bot Factory. Actually, I guess they're not that new. I mean, they haven't played a huge amount, but they are, I think, Super Giant. Platinum, for those who don't understand Zero K's esoteric ratings. Basically, Platinum. Yeah, Catastrophe is... Well, Shield Bot is a factory I haven't really seen a whole lot recently. It seems like it's fallen out of favor. It's one of those factories that kind of goes in and out because it's a it's a steady factory. It does good work, but it doesn't really have any gimmicks. I mean, I realize, yes, shields are kind of a gimmick, and you get the felon, which is kind of a gimmick. But largely, the shield bot factory is just... You have tough units. Like, pretty much the toughest units for any particular role, and they just fight stuff and don't die, and you get enough of them, and you make a death ball and win. It's a pretty straightforward strategy. Not a whole lot of variation, but... It is... It's a standby strategy. It, it works. I mean, the only downside is that you do need to have a lot of shields for some of this stuff. Like, for felons in particular. Otherwise, they won't be able to do anything. So, like I said, they do have mechanics that base off their shields. It's just... You do need quite a bit of it to make it work. But yeah, if you have the numbers, if your macro's good, shield bots are great. If you want macro factory, not really micro factory. On the other hand, Cloakie is kind of wonky because Glaives are kind of weak and require a lot of micro, but can benefit tons from micro. And of course, they have cloaking units, which that's all about being tricky with positioning, which in fact, that's exactly what Chrissy is planning on doing with some scythes coming up, or a scythe coming up, presumably just for a bit of scouting, maybe a bit of raiding. On top of the Glaives that mostly just being used for scouting and poking. Although four Glaives, that's a little much for just scouting. Actually, considering another three glaives coming along the side here, it looks like Chrissy's going to go for a bit of a direct assault. Two front attack, one going over behind the bandits, and one going in front. Oh, no! No, they're just going to go try to sandwich the bandits. Kill them off completely right now. This is a little bit iffy. I don't think this will work. The bandits should be able to hit all of them separately, but no, actually, it does. It does, in fact, work. Hero glaive right here taking the last two bandits. And with that, Chrissy has a massive opening to hit Catastrophe with. Hopefully they're just waiting for these glaives to get together because, yeah, there they are. Okay, get it together and go. Unfortunately, the Lotus here is going to be a bit of a problem, but fortunately the glaives can wipe it out fairly quickly. The bandits coming in to support do manage to hold everything back. So Catastrophe winning, just barely winning out that little raid, and actually taking a lot of Chrissy's forces in the process. That was a fairly large blow. Like Chrissy had invested a major amount of their money, in, or major amount of their metal into that raid. And unfortunately that one Lotus completely wrecked them, and I kind of wish that Chrissy had just, I know, I say line move all the time, but I do kind of wish Chrissy had just kind of gone in a bit of an arc once they spotted the Lotus, like, just pull out so they can get all the Glaives in it at once, so they could take out the Lotus and then deal with the Bandits. But like I said, Cloaky Bot Factory requires quite a bit of micro to actually be effective. Especially when you're dealing with size. Does manage to get rid of the Lotus, will go down to the Bandits, however. Takes out a couple in the process, but that's not really enough. What Chrissy needs right now, if they want to do any significant raiding, is to get rid of the defenses and then have something to follow up with. They have the follow-up here with the Glaives, but they don't have anything to really break the defenses. I mean, the, okay, the Reaver's coming in here. Four bandits against a Reaver, that's an even fight. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised Chrissy didn't just go around the side with these Glaives. I understand, I, I really respect the hero Glaive. Did really good work, but at the same time, if there's something here, like, just go along. I don't know if Chrissy's aware of that, though. I think Chrissy actually isn't. They're not... No, they got radar, but it's not quite forward enough. They haven't built up into the middle of the map, so they wouldn't have known. It's just they had the glaives going here, and I would have been, it would have been kind of neat to see them go around the back. Like, just totally behind the bandits. The thing to bear in mind is 0K is it's always stronger to have your opponent retreat. Sorry, to retreat. Sorry. It's always stronger to have your opponent retreat into their own base, because if you're in their base and they're advancing on you into their own base, you have all the cards. Because, I mean... Units, when retreating, have effectively increased range. And when... Oof. The bandit's going down here, taking a lot... Doing a lot of damage here. Getting past the Reaver, but not getting past everything else. Still, though, enough forces for Catastrophe. But back to what I was saying. With 
with retreating because that's the advantage state. If you can get inside your opponent's base and force their units to get back into it, and they have no other real defenses, you can just wipe out the rest of their base and kite them into their base. You can kite into the super sensitive, highly valuable stuff like factories and caretakers, metal extractors, and wind generators, and your opponent is attacking into you. They're not retreating into you. I mean, it's risky because you might end up losing all the units because they basically have nowhere to go. But your opponent is fighting at a, dis at a disadvantage inside of their own base. So to me, that's just worth it. Because, again, it's a huge advantage when you can force your opponent to retreat. Or, sorry, force your opponent to advance. And you can retreat. But I don't see it very often because, again, the risk of metal donation, it's real. So I can totally understand why people would be reluctant to potentially risk a fair amount of their investment into going in the backyard of their opponent's base. It's just there's so much value you can get off that if you pull it off. Still, though, Reaver coming in for Catastrophe. Thankfully for them, they upgraded their commanders. The Light Particle Beam, good choice against basically everything. But at the same time, that does not really matter. Chrissy managing to expand a fair bit in behind, but Catastrophe just dominating the center. Completely going for that, taking the, nor the northwest side of the map, taking the center of the map, taking the northeast side of the map, is, or the eastern side of the map, cent the center eastern side of the map, and that is just going to be very difficult for Chrissy to deal with. Like, Catastrophe's economy is growing at a rapid rate that Chrissy is not really trying to counter. This is actually really why I'd say it's exactly what Shieldbot wants to have, is a situation where they can just kind of build up, maybe lose a few units here and there, sure, but build up and push forward gradually while getting larger and larger economy. Because like I said, Shieldbot kind of wins on macro. And Chrissy right now, they got a 10 metal per second advantage. Sorry. Catastrophe right now has a 10 metal per second advantage on Chrissy. So, that I want to see really pan out. But I don't know. I think Chrissy is going to have a bit of a tricky time. Because as it stands, like, Chrissy's... They got nothing. They, they literally have... I mean, not nothing. They have this. They have two Reavers, a Ronin, and a Glaive. That is their army right now. And their commander, which they could jump, and they will jump, because they need to get out of dodge there. Like, do not stay in that. Get out of there. Move elsewhere. Try to fight something else. Try to find somewhere else to fight. If there's anywhere else to fight, which there kind of is. There's a lot of naked expansions, but the problem, or nearly naked expansions, but the problem is nearly naked might as well be naked when your opponent, I mean, sorry, nearly naked might as well be fully defended if your opponent only has a couple Reavers. Like, okay, a couple Reavers will get past the Lotus. But that's like one expansion. The rest of your forces can regroup to attack them. There's not a whole lot of choice that Chrissy has as far as raiding goes. Certainly can't just send a handful of glaives around the map. Like, this is enough. I really like the way Catastrophe is building up the defenses. They're being very efficient with that. Like You see, there's only a couple spots that are being built up, really on the borders. Some of the expansions that can be snuck around to. And even then, not much. Just enough to make sure that a handful of glaives could not just go around the back and take them out. Very efficient that way. Still, though, Chrissy has been managing to build up their forces somewhat, and they do have a few slings just to make sure they can get, you know, counter skirmisher, get rid of some of the defenses. Not a bad idea. But it's still an awkward position. I mean, with the rogues just tearing apart all the reavers that Chrissy had built, Catastrophe is basically just waiting for a decent amount of forces to be all together. All their thugs, maybe an outlaw or two, a bunch of rogues. This is your standard shield bot ball. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier, that shield bot wants to get a ball of shields. And that's what they're getting. I mean, the Glaives coming in here are doing a fine job get, trying to get rid of the Thugs. This is actually a really good composition to get rid of the Thugs, but the problem, of course, is the Lotus is in the back. But that's what the Slings are for. So I do respect Chrissy's, Chrissy's unit composition choices. They're good choices. I mean, the Outlaw is going to be really stuffing those choices, those choices, but they are good choices. Good rating, too, getting rid of this Conjure... Actually, Convict, rather. How many Convicts are there, by the way? That's always an important question. Oh, Okay. Oh, sorry. Icon distance is a bit off. I'll have to change that between games. There are six convicts. Okay, no, never mind. Catastrophe's got plenty. They've been doing fine building workers. Glaive, however, managing to get just around the outlaw, baiting it out a little bit, so it's out of position to stop the glaives. One of them will manage to possibly get rid of all the metal extractors. Yes! It will definitely manage to get rid of all the metal extractors. This rogue is either stuck in or just doesn't want to move right now. But for whatever, whatever reason... Glaive managed to get rid of two of the metal extractors for basically free. Outlaw man not managing to stop anything. I mean, the knight's able to get through a bit, and I do like the use of the knight. That will help deal with the shields, but unfortunately, 
There's not a whole lot that Chrissy has. It's just a matter of lack of funds that's making everything difficult. Ooh, good choice in the scythe too, getting to the shields completely. And that's the thing you want to do when you're fighting the shield bot factory, is use whatever you can to bypass shields. Either use status effects, because those hit shields hard, and basically nullify them in one or two shots, compared to what you normally use. Use phantoms, because those generally bypass shields, because shields only... Shields will only block a shot if the amount of shield health remaining is greater than the shot damage. Phantoms deal 1500 damage a shot, so thugs can't block them. At all. Thugs max is 1250. Good luck with that. Or use things like Ronin and Slings, like use Artillery and Skirmishers, just to pepper the area with... with stuff. And I consider Scythe in the same category as Phantom, it just bypasses shields completely. But yeah, when you have Skirmishers and Artillery, it goes in a big area, the shields are wide, it takes them out just by not even having to hit. It's just such a big hitbox. At this point, though, Catastrophe's economy is so strong that I'm not even sure how much it matters. I mean, good thinking, good tactics when it comes to the use of the units, good unit composition as well, but it's just how much money can you get? It's a 2 to 1 economy ratio, and Chrissy is doing a really good job just making it as efficient as possible, but again, it's a 2 to 1 economy ratio. There's only so efficient it can be. The use of the slings is quite smart, but sooner or later, I think Catastrophe is going to wise up to it and either drop some phoenixes because they already switched to air, or switch back to bandits. Let's go mass bandit and send the bandits in. They already have gotten a lot of bandits. Just getting them in position and sneak around the back exactly what I wanted to see Catastrophe, sorry, Chrissy do earlier. Catastrophe is doing right now at the 11 minute mark. While it won't be able to get to the slings easily, it's still forcing so much more micro off Chrissy. They have to focus on two fronts now. I think Catastrophe is going to take the advantage. Take advantage of the opportunity, push in here, wipe out everything Chrissy has up front, and that should be game. I mean, if Chrissy is able to push to hold this back at all, I'll be very impressed, but quite frankly, I think Chrissy has very few resources left. I mean, they just lost two more metal extractors. Actually, three more metal extractors. Their commander's still alive. They could rebuild with commander, and that, that would kind of work. And I really would recommend they do so. But at this point, Chrissy is still running on, like I said, half, 40% of their opponent's economy. You don't win running on 40% of your opponent's economy, even if you have good composition, even if you are being fairly efficient with the units. Chrissy isn't being perfectly efficient, and he kind of can't with this number set. Ooh, the tick almost gets in. Good thinking, I like it. Or the tick, the imp. Almost gets in. I do like that thinking. But the problem, of course, when you're dealing with things like imps is that they have a hard time getting in because of outlaws. However, oh, that imp could have almost gotten in, taking out most of this stuff, too. I was gonna say, however, thugs do not fire that frequently, so imps could theoretically get in. And just get under the thugs and dodge the thug shots and just get near the outlaw. Sure, the outlaw will kill them, but by that point, the imp's close enough it can stun out most of their opponents. Unfortunately, again, just aren't enough units for Chrissy to be able to hold this back. And with the Ravens coming in here to wipe out basically all the slings, or the factory, or the caretakers, that works too. Take out the caretakers first. They maybe go for the slings. Doesn't really matter. Like, again, Catastrophe has such a high large economy that Chrissy is. They're trying. They're rebuilding. I like that. They are getting that getting. They are getting that going. But again, I don't really know what Chrissy has to work with. And it ain't much. They're going on us. Chrissy does have the commander that does have the machine gun, and it is able to corner these rogues. But it just doesn't seem like it's going to be enough. And Chrissy is trying, but unfortunately, the commander doesn't understand they can shoot past a tree. Like this is a dead tree. Just shoot the tree down. But more importantly, the rogue. I mean, it does have a massive support force coming in here. And while that little commander there did manage to pull away a lot of Catastrophe's forces, again, Catastrophe has two armies that are as big as Chrissy's each. This Valiant effort from Chrissy, but this is game. This is towel throwing time. Chrissy's still holding on, but right now it's just nothing. So yeah, that game, really good thing. Overall good thinking by Chrissy. A lot of good plays. I really like the way that the bandits were taken out at the beginning by the glaives. Very good thinking. That, oh, goodness. No, all those ravens miss. Did all those ravens seriously miss? Wow, that is the luckiest commander in the world. But anyway, the... Yeah, there was some good use of the glaives there, but it was unfortunate that they lost all the glaives. That Chrissy lost all the glaives to that one lotus, the bandit support. That could have been micro microed a little bit better. But then after that, it just came down to the fact that Catastrophe was building way more aggressively than Chrissy was raiding, and Chrissy wasn't really ex expanding that aggressively themselves. And I feel like a lot of it came down to that Chrissy just switched quickly off of Glaives when there was plenty of room to raid. They switched very quickly over to Reaver and just pushed in with Reaver, and that's all they really had, which is fine for a base assault, but on Ravage, that's not really a thing you do. Not up until later in the game, like this stage in the game, sure. 
like five, ten minutes into the game. But at that point, nah, Chrissy could have gone in much more strongly with far less units. Like, far, or far cheaper units, right? Not fewer units. And the commander goes down. Chrissy losing probably what their last hope was to stay in the game. And indeed it was. That is the towel throw. That is GG. Well, not even GG. Just destroy everything. And that is game. But I gotta say, Chrissy managed to hold on quite effectively just despite the fact that they basically didn't have any army advantage for the entire game. Like I said, good tactics. If they had the, if they had the metal behind it, it probably would have gone their way. But that was entirely a macro game. That was just Catastrophe building up, not needing to defend as much as... I mean, okay, they defended as much as they needed to, which wasn't much. And Chrissy didn't even try to attack. I think if Chrissy had managed to get a few more raiders in or keep some of the raiders alive, or just go around and not attack the main base directly, then they would have been able to take out the expansions. And if those expansions had gone down, then Catastrophe wouldn't have had anything. Chrissy would have been able to just win simply by really good unit choice. Yeah, clever play, just not enough resources to actually make it work. Alright, so next up is going to be a game. This will be the last of the replays that I have lined up. I think I might just try playing afterwards, see if I can play on stream now. I've maybe found a way of having more fun with the game. I've also adjusted my hockeys once again, but in a way that makes them a lot easier to, to remember. Because that was the problem I was having before, is remembering what my hockeys were. Like, okay, let's just make it more intuitive. So I did that. But anyway, last match for the replays is going to be Gota versus Zenfer on Onyx Cauldron. So, another one with Zenfer. Uh, wait, no. I was saying another one with Zenfer. Yeah, we had Zenfer and Sparkles earlier in Red Comet. That's right. So, yeah, another one with Zenfer and Gota, who we haven't seen a lot of recently. But, you know, they've come back, at least for now. So, I'll get back to that when we get back to it. But that'll be in a couple minutes, so stay tuned. 